sewing machine and I know you've seen a lot of it in clips in my videos but just to give you a little bit of a more interesting view so I acquired this machine from my grandmother and my grandmother got it my mom told me that it was in the early 1950s um, her her mother and father drove up to Phoenix to, and they were intending to get a singer but the salesman had this one and it was used at that point but it couldn't have been used very much because from what I've been able to tell this machine was made around 1950 so if anything it had a year or so of use on it but that's how I ended up getting it and it's an amazing machine so let me give you well you know what before I can actually really explain this machine I should explain to you about her mother so give me just one moment okay so this might actually turn into strange german mid-century sewing machine history but this is what i would consider her mother this is a vesta vesta of course the goddess of hearth and home um she is lovely now here's what happened in the earlier days before World War II in Dresden, there was a company that made these, the Titan, things like that. All right, so this machine is a Vesta and it was made by the L.O. Dietrich Company. You can see down here, L.O.D. And, um, sorry about that. Okay, so it is a shuttle it doesn't have a bobbin. It has a shuttle that goes back and forth this way. It doesn't vibrate. It goes back and forth, which is lovely. Hand cranked everything. So these were marketed as the best sewing machine in the world. It's like the Rolls Royce of hand crank sewing machines. Okay, made in Dresden. Now World War Two. Things that happened in World War Two. Um, the company was uh, obliterated. Was bombed out. And after the war, um, any equipment that was useful was uh, for reparations and everything taken back to Russia, and all documents were destroyed. So it's kind of hard to find out exactly when this machine was made and um, things like that. There's a serial number, but it, it's a pretty much impossible to trace. Anyhow, after, after the war, when everything's being put back together again, the Mr. Stark, I always think of Tony Stark, but Mr. Stark was the plant manager of um, this L.O. Dietrich company in, in Dresden. And he went over and joined with Mr. Meister, who's was, he made some sewing machines. Hang on, let me switch over here. The Meister company was making sewing machines uh, before, but they were mostly, from what I can tell, like Singer clones. At that point, there was a lot of Singer clone machines going on. Uh, because the patent had gotten to the point where that was allowed. So there's a lot of machines out there that look a lot like a singer. After the war, uh, Mr. Stark came over and joined Mr. Meister, who, who was predominantly in the sewing machine, actual, no, sewing machine cabinet construction company, with a little bit of sewing machine mixed in. So it was a good mix. So one of the reasons why I wanted to show you the Vesta is there are a lot of qualities in this machine that match that Vesta. This arm here is the same arm. The, let me see if I can get down here. The decal pattern on here is the same as on the Vesta. Um, when you're using it, the gearing feels the same. Um, so there's a, a lot of transition, so you can tell that they're related, you know. So anyhow, I'll do a separate video sometime just doing exactly how the Vesta works. That was predominantly just to show you that 
there there's a continuity of how these things came together. So after, from what I can tell, um, in Schweinfurt, in Germany, this is where they started making these things, and they, um, I think they started in like forty eight, and then. But the ones, the early ones, did not have this light out here. They were flat. Okay, so that's why I'm thinking this one was around 1950. Again, it is hard to find information on it. But let me give you a little bit of a how it works. Alrighty, so you can see she's not a showpiece. She's used a lot. Um, and the first thing, um, and I'm putting, I'm chalking this up to uh, scarcity of materials and retooling after the war. But where you have this slide out where you could normally think you could pop a bobbin in, you actually can't. You Every time you change the bobbin, you have to lift up the machine, which weighs probably about oh, close to 20 pounds and get the machine out there. But you can see underneath everything is solid. Everything is um, just, it's a well-oiled machine. Honestly, that's what it is. Alrighty. Here's my serial number. If anyone actually has any information about serial numbers and Vestas or this, let me know. This is my little emblem. I can move this out of the way. Okay, so there's the emblem down there on the bottom. This will drop the feed dogs. So if you can see here, if I turn it up, feed dogs come up and that can drop which is really nice if you're doing something like machine quilting or something like that. Like I said, this um, model has the light, so I put an LED in there because the standard old school light bulb got pretty hot. But with the LED bulb, it works now. This just uses regular sewing machine needles, as does the Vesta. That's another fun thing, is that Vesta machine uses modern sewing machine needles, so no problem getting things to work. This is the little knob. It adjusts the pressure of the feed dogs. Just about every sewing machine has something up here. Um, on this one, it has these little arrows that point to all the spots where you need to oil because not every hole is an oil hole. Okay? And so, you know, it shows this and things like that. So, this is my width. So, that's the widest zigzag, the narrowest. These little things say I wanted to make sure that my zigzag only got a certain width so when I'm not paying attention I could just tighten that and it'll only go that far. They're just little little stops you can put on. It's got room for two spools so two things either you can run a double needle on it which I have or you can save one to uh, make bobbins so that you don't have to unthread it. If you run out of a bobbin you can just use this put a separate spool here and rethread bobbins that way. This is the bobbin winder. Hang on one sec. Wind a bobbin right now because I'm sure you've probably seen it. But it just uses these regular really wide, I don't remember the class name, sorry about that, but the wide bobbins. Pop it on. There's a spring. And then uh, push this down and that engages it. Right here is the little rubber part that engages it, and you can turn the knob, the inside of the knob, towards you. I've turned that towards me, and then if I just hit the pedal, it should start turning. Like that. Okay. And this machine, and this machine does have a really nice sound. That is one thing I can say for it. <clears throat> so in the back here is where I have my motor. Now the last time we changed this motor out was like in the 80s, I believe. So it's been good. I just took her in for a checkup and the motor is strong, so we're fine. Here's the back, you know. Now if you ever need to get into the gears and everything, this, just like in most machines, there's a round thing here, or most vintage, that you unscrew and you can just get in. Well this one has an entire plate. So you don't just see this little part, you could see the entire length, which is very nice, if there's a problem. But honestly, I don't really have problems with her. Um, I use her a lot, so I do take her in and get her checked up um, every couple of years or so. But she's doing really good, so that is my Meister. Oh, this down here. So down is full reverse, 
up is the widest, widest forward stitch. So this little knob here, if I unscrew it all the way, I have free movement, okay? From all the way forward at a basting stitch to all the way backwards at a basting stitch. But let's say I just want a really good regular sewing, which I am for me, I do just under, under there three, okay? Then I can tighten this nut so that it'll only go down that same length and up that same length. So that's nice. And then of course zero is just standing still. And up here, this is for needle placement. So right now over here, it's where I have it most of the time, is just centered. All right. If I shift this over here, it's going to put the needle on the far right. So here, this is the needle at the far right, and that's the needle centered. So you can see it just kind of shifts over, you know. And that's handy, I guess, if you're going to be doing buttonholes and things. I usually use the uh, buttonholer on the treadle. Now, with this machine, there's something I've been looking for, and I have never found it. And if any of you ever find it, please, please let me know. This company came out with something they called a electromagnetic buttonholer. And it was supposed to be the most amazing futuristic buttonholer and it's disappeared. So if any of you ever find it, I want one, please let me know. Give me a link. Um, but yeah, that's my Meister. So I'm going to sew a couple things, just give you a little quick demo. And so uh, I hope you like it.